Hey friends, welcome to the Farm and Pastor's Wife. I'm so glad you're here. It has turned off cold here in North Carolina, or cold for us, that is. And so what better thing to have on a cold night than chicken and dumplings? So stay tuned. We're making the fat, fluffy dumplings, and we're having chicken and dumplings. Okay, first let me say if you're new to my channel, welcome. I'm so glad you're here. This month is a little different. A lot of my videos are Vlogmas videos, but occasionally I'm throwing in a cooking video, which is my normal repertoire of videos <laughs> or genre of videos is normally cooking. So I'm so glad you're here. If you're new, please consider hitting subscribe, hit that bell notification, give me a thumbs up. And if you're back, welcome back. I'm so glad you're here. Okay, so to start out with, we got to boil the chicken. Now, if I had a whole chicken thawed, that would be my preference. I love to boil and cook down a whole chicken. Love it. There's, there's something therapeutic for me, but I didn't decide to cook a, a full-blown meal until just not too long ago. And I didn't have anything thawed, and I knew thawing chicken breasts would be a lot easier, a lot quicker than thawing a whole chicken. So, and if I was really good at using my Instapot, that would be a good time to use my Instapot, but I'm not real proficient with my Instapot yet. So, we're going to start with chicken breasts. I've got five of good sized chicken breasts in here, and um, I left. You know, some people trim their chicken breasts first. I've left the, any little fat on there. There's not much on there, but what little there is, I've left on there. That just adds good flavor. And when I get ready to shred the chicken, I'll trim that off then. Um, so I'm just gonna cover this with water. looks more than more than enough okay let me grab my salt and pepper I hope I have enough in here I love well I don't have enough black pepper so we'll just dump that whole thing in there we can season it up later that's plenty to get it started and I'm gonna add some salt good little amount of salt Maybe a teaspoon and a half, two teaspoons. And we're gonna add in some poultry seasoning. And I just have some, I think that came from Aldi. If I didn't have poultry seasoning, I'd just add some sage. But we're gonna add in some poultry seasoning. And I'm gonna add in just a little bit of chicken bouillon granules. Let me grab that real quick. Okay guys, this is what I'm using today, but if you had chicken base, that would be great. I don't have, I'm out of my chicken base. I've been out for a while too. I need to get some, but this is great stuff and I'm just gonna use some of this um, chicken bouillon granules. That'll give the um, broth a good richness and just really good flavor. Okay, so I'll meet you over at the stove. Okay guys, I've been cooking and so I've got a mess. <laughs> But I'm just going to put that over on high heat. I'm going to bring it to a boil. Once it comes to a boil, I'll turn the heat down and um, put the lid on it and just let it cook low and slow for as long as I possibly can. The longer the better. So I hope we've got a few hours worth of cook time for this. I should have put it on a little earlier, um, but I didn't. So we're just gonna bring this to a boil. I'll put the lid on and we'll just let her cook till she's just fork tender and falling apart. Okay y'all, so I've gotten the chicken out and we will turn you guys this way. And let me just say, I take a fork and pull mine apart. Now there's some gristle and fat pieces I'll take out. Um, but 
you can take a hand mixer, put these breasts in a bowl, take a hand mixer, mix it up, but it shreds it really fine. And that's great for some dishes. However, for my chicken and dumplings, I want to get um, a hunk of meat. So I don't use a hand mixer when I'm doing chicken and dumplings. I just use a fork and pull it apart like this. And it just is super easy. It's really hot right now. Um, sometimes I just get my hand in there and go too. But um, I'm not going to do that today because it's hot. <laughs> the chicken's hot. I hadn't let it cool completely yet. Now I let this cook a couple of hours probably. Just simmer. Once it came to a boil, I brought it back up, I mean, brought it to a simmer, turned it down to a simmer, and um, yeah, so I cooked it that long. I'm going to shred all of this. I don't know that I will actually use all of it in the chicken and dumplings, but like I said, I can use shredded chicken for anything, so um, I will keep and store what I don't use in my chicken and dumplings, but I'm gonna shred all this up and I'll bring you back in just a second. Okay, y'all, so sometimes my cabinet doors are open. <laughs> I've been doing really good with that here lately and there they are, wide open. Anyway, um, a lot of people can do a cornstarch slurry or whatever to thicken it. I am just using good old cream of chicken soup. Um, I think it gives it a silkiness that even the cornstarch and flour mixtures don't give, as well as it continues to add flavor. So, but if you are opposed to cream of chicken soups and so forth, um, by all means, use whatever you prefer. You could just do a milk and, um, or water and cornstarch slurry mix it in and you don't want it thick because chicken and dumplings aren't like the broth is not like super thick it's just all right so I'm gonna swish that around and see if and turn the burner on I'm gonna see if um, I may need a second a second can well, that's looking pretty good right there. That's looking really good. Um, get back in there. I may just scrape off. to get a little more out I don't think I need the other can so we're just gonna go with one cream of mushroom I mean cream of chicken I hope I didn't say cream of mushroom but it is cream of chicken okay so we're gonna let this come to a boil and while we're heating this back up I'm going to make our dumplings okay y'all so there is a very big controversy in my very own family over dumplings and here's the way it goes Isaac wants the flat noodle type dumplings Caroline wants the fat fluffy doughy dumplings I'm kind of a mixture of both or, or really I just don't care and I think Bryant prefers the fat fluffy ones too or he may tend to be more like me and it just doesn't matter um, Sometimes when they're both here, I try to do somewhere in the middle and make them flatter, but not noodle flat. So they still puff up a little bit. Um, but Isaac's not here tonight. Caroline will be. So since I don't care either way and Bryant, he either leans more towards the fat fluffy dumplings or he just doesn't care as well. We're going to have the fat flump fluffy dumplings tonight so but you make them pretty much the same way when I get my mixture to where I want it um, I'll then tell you how to continue on to make them the flat dumplings so let me grab all my stuff and I'll meet you back right here 
Okay, so I don't measure. I just scoop and go, but I'm going to try my best to measure for you guys today. So, we'll see how this goes. Okay, I'm going to start with about two cups of self-rising flour. You want to use self-rising. Um, I just think it works the best. There's a hole. Half. And a hole. And this is one thing, like, if you put them in there and you see, oh, that's not enough, you just make another batch of it. It's okay. Okay, we're going to set that aside. And let me get you turned down here. Let's see if I can get you where there's not a shadow. Okay. And I'm going to eyeball, but you're going to use about a fourth of a cup of... I use the butter Crisco. But you can use, you know, regular Crisco. Either one is fine. Now this is, I'm making a biscuit, pretty much a biscuit dough. Just like I would if I was going to make biscuits and I didn't have my formula L or I wasn't making my two ingredient biscuits. I'm going to put just a little bit more Crisco in there. I do keep my Crisco at room temperature, so it's kind of soft. Okay, that looks good. All right, but that was still probably around a fourth of a cup, maybe just a little bit more, but not much. So instead of, in my biscuits, I would use buttermilk, but we're gonna use what I call sweet milk, you may know as whole milk or 2%, whatever you have. And that was, a, I had a cup measurement, and then I'm not sure how much we'll need, so. You just wanna make it into, I don't get it quite as wet as my biscuit dough. The reason I poured it in a measuring cup is so I could tell you exactly how much I'm using. And I can tell you now, we're going to need more dumplings. That is not going to be enough. It's been so long since I've made chicken and dumplings. Yeah, we're definitely going to need more dumplings. Now, I would probably stop right about here if I was making flat dumplings because you want that very good and dry. You just want it to be able to hold together, which it does. Um, and then you can add on a... On a uh, Oh goodness, a cutting board or your board or whatever you roll out doughs and stuff with. Um, you would want to um, roll it out and add a little flour to your board. This is just going to be a splash going in. Um, and roll it out as thin as you can get it. And then I cut them in about two inch strips or squares, two inch squares. And then we just drop them in. Okay, so this is gonna get us started, I guess. I tell you what, I'm gonna set this aside and make another batch real quick. But that's how you make dumplings. And what we're gonna do is I'm just gonna pinch it off. My finger is sticking to my fingers. I'm just gonna pinch it off into little ball shapes and drop it in the broth as the broth begins to simmer pretty heavily. So let me set this aside and get another one making, and I'll be right back. Okay, there we have it. I've made two, you know, semi-batches. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to give you the measurement of my first batch. That should be plenty for a family of four. Um, I am feeding more than that tonight, so um, we are going to 
I added more. So I will give you the measurements of the first. It was two cups of self-rising flour, about a fourth of a cup, a heavy fourth of a cup of butter flavored Crisco, and three fourths of a cup of whole milk. Now, you just want a good doughy consistency, not wet where it's sticking to you, but you don't want it dry where it's crumbling apart either. So, um, that is the mixture you're looking for, and we're just going to take it into golf ball sizes and drop it down into the broth. And so, we'll, I'll meet you over at the stove. Okay, y'all, um, it is starting to boil. So, what I'm going to do is I've just been, while I was waiting for it to boil, I've just been pinching off little round pieces and kind of balling them up a little bit. You don't have to ball them up. All you have to do is pinch and drop. Um, you definitely don't have to make a ball. I just had a little extra time while I was waiting for the broth to come to a boil. Don't drop them in there too hard or it will splatter on you and it will hurt. You can also add some seasoning into your dumpling mixture if you wanted to. You could add some sage or some rosemary or whatever. I'm just a kind of a plain Jane. My family's a we're just country, <laughs> and so we just do it the old-fashioned way, but you could definitely season it up by adding, um, you know, some thyme or rosemary to your dough. It's, it's already in my broth, you know, the poultry seasoning, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to finish dropping these um, dough balls in here. I'll then turn it down to simmer. And I'll take a spoon and kind of push them down just a little bit. You don't want to stir them hard because they will break up. Um, you just want to push them down with your spoon. Give them a nice little push. Um, and then you're just going to turn the um, your stove to your stove top to simmer. Put the lid on them and let them cook for about 10 minutes. And then we'll add our chicken back in. Heat it back up, and we will have a good old pot of homemade, delicious chicken and dumplings ready to go. Now, stay tuned. I'm going to tell you another easy way. If you've seen my other chicken and dumpling video, which I'll try to link down below, but if you've seen it, you know there is a third dumpling that you can do, and it is a really easy if you're a working mama and you work outside the home and you come in in a hurry, um, it's a it's a dumpling that I used to, when I worked, when I was a working mama, I would have my chicken boiled ahead of time, come in, uh, put to, and have some broth and make my soup mixture real quick. And, and then in no time I did these dumplings and you, it's, Super, super easy. So, if you can see, I'm going to show you. I'm just going to take my spoon and be sure they all get submerged in there. Okay, see how they're puffing up? Isn't that pretty? Okay, I'm going to turn this down to simmer. And I'm going to kind of prop the lid. I don't want it to boil over. And let me, before I put the lid on, I want to give a good check at the bottom. I want to be sure nothing's down at the bottom and sticking. Okay, so we're going to let it simmer for about 10 minutes and we'll be right back. Okay, y'all look at those big old fat fluffy dumplings right there. Look at that. All right, so I'm going to start putting the chicken in. I did save out one and a half breast and I'm not sure that I'll use all of this. We'll see. Gonna put a bunch in. I like a lot of chicken in my chicken and dumplings. Yep, I say let's put it all. There we go. Okay, guys. So I'm just gonna let that chicken get heat back up, and then we will be ready to fix us a beautiful pot of the most delicious. Um, chicken and dumplings. Now hang on, let me tell you the other kind of dumpling, the easy dumpling. Okay y'all, so this is the one I refer to as the working mama dumpling. 
and it is you fix your chicken you fix it ahead of time you fix your broth as soon as you come in if you have some stored broth or whatever and you add your soup to it season it up get it hot and you already have your chicken ready um, but then your dumplings you don't have to make a batch of dumplings what you can do is you can take a can of buttermilk biscuits not the flaky kind don't get the kind that peels up in layers just regular buttermilk grains Pillsbury grains and you just take a biscuit and pinch it into about one biscuit can get you about five six dumplings um, and they might not be that big but you do a whole can of dumplings for a big pot of for a big pot of um, chicken and dumplings and you probably can't tell much of a difference. They are so good and I did that for years. For years when I worked, I was, and when I was in nursing school, it was just, that was the easy way to do it. Now, yeah, I have time to make my own dumplings and it doesn't take much time to make dumplings. Y'all saw how quick I whipped up a batch of biscuit dough. That's how easy it is. But if you don't have time, if you don't want to mess up the dishes, if you don't want to do, you know, if you're just in a hurry, the working mama dumplings is a good idea. So store that away somewhere. Um, so, okay, I've called Bryant, told him to come on over. Supper will be ready in just a little bit. I've got to clean off the dining room table and then we'll eat. He's smiling at something. What was you smiling at? Cause I'm ready for this. Because he's ready for this. <laughs> it's been a long day. Long, hard day. When she did the drop dumplings for Caroline. I did. Which do you prefer? The cut dumplings. Oh, you do? That's okay. I thought you and I were kind of, it didn't matter. I don't discriminate. Look at that. Look at that ham in there. Did you see the slaw? Yes. Did I see it? I've already been in it. Oh, he's already been in it. Yeah. Um, that's one thing I feel like always goes with dumplings for some reason. I'm not sure why, but I always make slaw when we have dumplings. Yep. All right, guys. All right. Join us for the taste test. We'll see you in the dining room. Okay, guys. We're going to let Bryant give it a taste. Look at that hot steam. Show him that dumpling. Look at there. Show him that fluffy dumpling right there. Now, is that Southern Biscuit mixed dumplings? Nope, that's just okay. homemade from scratch, self rising flour. You can do it from Southern Biscuit. Oh yeah, you can formula make it, L. yep. Yep, my Formula L Southern Biscuit mix. You get that butter and that lard in there? Mm -hmm. I use butter Crisco, so there's butter in that too, so. All right, here we go, guys. We got all white meat, right, Mom? Mm-hmm. Here we go. Can you cut one of them dumplings? There's also a lazy mama way to make them dumplings. I've already told I them. I make them. I already told them how to do that. Yeah. Look, it's come, turn it in where we can see the inside. So they see it's done. Sorry. Yeah. See, it's like a biscuit in there. Mm -hmm. It's done. Just like a biscuit. Yep. Perfect. This is not for anybody on a low carb diet. No, I can only have a little bit. That's right. It's good stuff. Though. Look, Mr. Levi's patiently waiting for his plate over there. Levi, you ready, buddy? All, All right, right. This is a keeper. Yep. Thank you guys for watching The Farm and Pastor's Wife. And remember, if the grease is hot enough, you can fry anything. You can fry anything. Bye, y'all. Nice.